Former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley slamming entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy on foreign policy last night. Watch. Is there anyone on stage who would not support the increase of more funding to Ukraine? We would, would not support it. The reality is that today, today, Ukraine is not a priority for the United States of America. The problem that Vivek doesn't understand is he wants to hand Ukraine to Russia. He wants to right. let China eat Taiwan. He wants to go and stop funding Israel. He is a professional politician. There you have it. Your watch. So you the reality make America is, America less safe. You have no foreign me, policy experience, and it shows. And you know what? The, it the shows. Foreign policy Joining me now, former Connecticut senator, former Democratic vice presidential nominee, United Against Nuclear Iran chairman and author of The Centrist Solution, How We Made Government Work and Can Make It Work Again, Joe Lieberman. Sir, good morning. Morning, Cheryl. Good to be with you. What was your Thank take you. on that exchange last night? Uh, I thought it was a really important exchange. I mean, uh, part of the question in this year's Republican presidential uh, primaries are, is really is this still the party of uh, Ronald Reagan on foreign policy because Reagan definitely would be supporting Ukraine <clears throat> so in one sense it was kind of encouraging when Brett Baer asked that question that uh, only two of the candidates up there said they would not continue to support Ukraine Ramaswamy shot his hand up um, uh, DeSantis was a little more tentative but I, I thought uh, uh, Nikki Haley put in a great performance last night. I also thought uh, Vice President Pence was at his best. And the question is, was it a turning point uh, performance by Mike Pence? In other words, will it lead to what might now seem like a surprise victory by Pence in the Iowa caucuses? If it does, um, the, the, the race is different, uh, very different than it looks now. Right now, I'd say the winner or the debate last night was Donald Trump, because uh, I didn't see anybody who really threatened uh, his lead uh, uh, by the uh, performance they put in last night. Probably DeSantis, who's number two, and not a bad night, but no nothing to shine forth and m make you feel that uh, this guy really is capable of taking the nomination from well, Trump. Well, I want to stay with the with the election, sir. I want to bring in my colleague Todd Pyro. He's got a question for you. Good to see you again, Senator okay. and fellow nutmaker, as always. As the chair of No Labels, <laughs> though, does anything you heard on stage last night impact the No Label strategies going into the 2024 race? Uh, not particularly. Uh, I mean, the, the, the 2024 rate, we know, as you know, No Labels is working real hard to qualify in all 50 states for a third line in case we decide to use it next year based on who the parties nominate. But uh, that, uh, the premise here is that um, most of the American people are fed up with both major parties because both major parties spend their time fighting each other instead of working together to get something done for the country. So. We want to be ready to run a bipartisan unity ticket. The people are really not uh, looking forward to another Trump-Biden race. But I would say after last night, uh, the odds are that there will be another Trump-Biden race. And we may well uh, decide next year we want to give the American people a third choice, very different, a bipartisan ticket. Well, we gave uh, eight choices out on that debate stage last night out of nine. Uh, Mr. Lieberman, it's always good to see you. Joe Lieberman, thank you for being here. Yeah.